Hi, Mark Nersh. I'm an application engineer at Gamex Laboratory Solutions, and today I will talk about the execution order in Simulink. So we get a lot of this question. So what is the actual execution order of the blocks in Simulink, and if we can set them? So I will start with the first question. How to find out what is the execution order in Simulink? If you want to know that, then we need to go to display, blocks, sort of execution order. And now we can visualize what is the execution order of the simulating blocks. So in this case, the transfer function will be the first block to be executed, after that the scope block, after that the constant block and the gain block will be the last to be executed. If we create subsystems that does not influence the execution order. So subsystems are used only for creating virtual hierarchy. So it does not affect the execution order of the blocks. Now if we add a PID controller to our system, then we can see that now in the execution order we have the 0 and we have 16, but all the rest of the numbers are missing. So where are the rest of the numbers? And the answer is that they are in the PID controller. And if we want to see them, then we can go to the PID controller and look under the mask. So here are the, all the rest of the numbers. And as you can see, Simulink optimizes the execution order of all the blocks through the whole system. This includes built in Simulink blocks as well. So it is possible that one block will be executed from one subsystem, another block from another subsystem, and so on. If we want that the blocks inside the subsystems or should be executed actually together, then we can create something called an atomic subsystem. To be able to do that, we need to go to block properties and select create as atomic in a checkbox. In this case, we will see that the edges of the subsystem block will change and it will become an atomic subsystem. Now if we rerun the simulation, we see that the first number also changed. I actually introduced here an algebraic loop, unfortunately. I will not discuss about algebraic loops uh, in this video. However, to get rid of the algebraic loop, I just added a unit delay block in this case. So now we can see that the subsystem is treated as a separate block. Now let's create an atomic subsystem for the controller as well. So we will have an atomic subsystem for a controller and we will have an atomic subsystem for the plant model. And if we rerun our simulation, then we will see that we have only these three numbers. Now if we enter these blocks, the plant model or the PID controller, then we will see that the first number also changed. So this shows from which atomic subsystem we are talking. So each atomic subsystem will be numbered and the first number shows from which subsystem execution order are we talking and the second number shows what is the actual execution order and the zero is always the highest level execution order. Now if you want actually to command the execution order, you can do that by using function calls. So if we create a function call subsystem and we call a function call trigger block, then we can actually command our system to execute the function call subsystem at a given moment. Now we can see that the execution order for our plant model and the execution order for our function call subsystem is the same. And this is because the function call subsystem will be executed at that moment when the trigger happens. So this is how can we directly influence uh, the execution order of a given block. If you would like to find out more, please visit our website. We also provide training services for Simulink and most of other toolboxes as well. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and see you in the next video. Bye!